this might be a tough decision right now. My team did I'm not just absolutely um, and NFL games that were like, right. whoa. I actually don't have a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, welcome to Scrum Tone. Uh, we have another guest here on the League of the Wings. The League of the Wings. The League of the Wings. Your mom's a hoe. What? What are you saying you about my mom? That meme? Yeah. Why would you say that? But can we uh, document the fact that Titus forgot to do his homework? And I didn't it's... forget to do my homework. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. You always lie, and you always blame me for not doing things. I remembered to do my homework. I just didn't do it. No. Let it be known. Close the door, by the way. Whenever your teacher asks you if you forgot to do your homework, just just accept it. No, I remembered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just own it, dude. I remembered. So Did we, I do it? No. <laughs> um. So what are we doing now? Oh, so this is League of the Wings. This is a podcast between uh, the hosts of Caleb L- Lasagna and Titus Oldham. Well, why didn't you... Bro, I'm two. Yo, I'm two behind. Yo, oh my god, I won last <laughs> week. Like freaking out, dude. I won last week. I win. Hell yeah. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, one. So one. congrats, you finally did fucking it. Fucking after fuck you. after four weeks. Yeah, you well, know, same with look. <laughs> look. Seems like there's a common trend in your life. Look, I fool people in thinking I'm a loser, and then that makes me an underdog. And every time when I'm a, I'm an underdog, I always win. You think I let up ever? No yeah. matter what I think of you and your underdog. I don't, no, no, it's not like that you're letting up. It's just that I just become that much better. Like I just ain't no way I'm losing. No matter how good the other opponent is, I'm always gonna come out on top. Like it's What was your what was your score when you won? Thanks, Troy. Yeah. One seventeen. That's decent. Bro, he had seventy eight. Like Yeah, I know. It was, it was an like, easy win for you. Dude, it was so win. It was so easy, bro. Okay. Um so you want to go over the predictions? Yeah, we can start with week four predictions because we have that um, done and filled out and yeah. we are ready to talk about it. Yeah, so um, Cincinnati first Jacksonville. It was actually a pretty close game and thanks to no fan base teams. Yeah, they really do not have a single fan base. Dude, like I, I not, uploaded... Not the, one. Yeah. Not one fan based. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna throw you out the window, bro. But like, <laughs> I posted the primetime banger and it only got 40 views. But it was like a game winning. Uh, it was a game winning field goal. Whereas the Ravens game or the other like game winning field goals, it got thousands of views. So I blame capitalism. We were watching it. It was. It was. I don't even know what to think. Like. Yeah. Joe Bo- bro played well. That was a pretty good good showcasing and that one tight end for them i think it was i got the long touchdown he had a crazy game i think he almost had two like 40 plus yard touchdowns but i think he was the reason why the cincinnati Bengals were able to come back and hit that game winning field goal honestly i was not too invested into this game because it was a shit show fest i mean a shit show fest yeah it's kind of interesting to see that cincinnati's three and one i mean wait who are the other teams that cincinnati beat I can't imagine that they're any good. Damn, they beat the Vikings. They lost to the Bears. They beat the Steelers 24-10. Who are we talking about? The Cincinnati Bengals being 3-1. and one. Yeah, the that, first that, that's that. weird to me because I feel like they should be 2-2. Two, two. I was about to say 1-3, but I was like, eh. Nah. Dude, how do they lose to the Bears but then win and then to the Steelers? Because Steelers are worse than the Bears right now. That is true, fucking Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> and, I mean, not to say that the Bears are good, but <laughs> the Steelers are that bad. Um, wait, fuck. Fuck. Okay. Um, let's move on to. I'm. Th- <laughs> what was I'm that? so. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm so like delirious. I don't even know if I'm processing the words that are coming out of my mouth right now. So the next game is the New York Jets and Tennessee Titans. How the f- I'm mad at th- I'm mad at you for this. Wait, how Listen, the f- how the fuck did the Jets win? Here's how they won. All yeah. right, they have a rookie QB and a lot of new or and or young playmakers. Basically, the whole organization is just fresh, so they weren't going to get off to the best start no matter what. Too many new pieces. 
Um, they have a great coach, but he's more defensive minded than anything else. So that's why the offense probably I'm imagining didn't look like they're getting off to a great start. I mean, Zach Wilson was throwing a lot of interceptions, I believe. Dude, he's the literally the worst quarterback in the league. As of right now, like rating or what? I don't know. I don't even know if it's true or not, but like he has, he had a 37 rating amongst the Patriots and a 42.6 rating amongst the Broncos. Well, you see, both those teams have proven to have really good defenses so far. But how can you have four interceptions in a singular game? That, I mean, yeah, that is definitely <laughs> different. But if four interceptions against Patriots or Broncos? Patriots. Yeah, I'm, Patriots are really good, but you shouldn't be trying four interceptions no matter what. I think the Titans' defense is not good. It's not right. even that. It's not even to the point where we're just like hey, they're okay. They can get them to playoffs, you know, because their offense is that good. It's simply their defense is not good. Um, How come the Colts weren't were able to score? Um, they weren't able to score. Well, I mean, they scored like 16 points, but I mean, like, why weren't they able to score more? Um, because literally half of our starting offense was out. Oh. Like, that's not an exaggeration either. Like, half of the starting <laughs> offense. <laughs> Yo, Carson. Or at least was playing on half a foot or something like that. Yo, you know? Carson Wentz just brings injuries to whatever team he Honestly, lands on. Yeah, I mean, we were having our fair share last year, but it wasn't as bad as this year for sure. Wherever Carson Wentz goes, that team is going to be decimated with injuries. I think I think I saw this coming even before the season started that Jets were going to get off to a slow start, but then uh, it would be a win like this that kind of picked them up and made them realize, like, oh, my God, we can actually win. Yeah. And so they'll probably do better than you think going forward not to the point where they'd probably be on the bubble for the playoffs or anything but maybe a good, uh, maybe a range of six to seven wins yeah overall uh, i was just about to say a good seven and ten record maybe yeah maybe i really do think that they're off to a good start as far as this franchise goes as almost at as full as a restart as you could possibly get think of like andrew luck and the colts or yeah. um the lions after who was it dan Dan, what's his name? What are you, the, what? the one quarterback for the Lions. What was his name? I don't remember. All I know is that Matthew Stafford was their qu- quarterback for such a long time. Well, yeah. I don't... Orlovsky. Orlovsky uh, during the... I don't know if it was the 0-16 season or the near 0-16 season, but yeah. Like, complete, just like, everyone's out. Mm. New people in. That's kind of what I'm seeing with the Jets. I feel like Jaguars are half-assing that a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, we'll bring in some, and we'll lose some. And now it's seeming like they're slowly losing more and more. And now that their coach is going through the whole controversy as well, it's like, yikes. Wait, what controversy? Oh, have you I mean, we've been working so hard. <laughs> yeah. But Urban Meyer, after Thursday night, he stayed in Cincinnati, which you don't usually do. Um, yeah. Coaches are usually supposed to go back with the players to... Um, you know, they're home at Jacksonville. And no matter after any game, you know, yeah. any away game. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he claimed that he stayed because he has family there. They wanted to go to dinner with the day after or something. Mm-hmm. And then a video was taken of him at a bar with him. It, it's kind of like you can vaguely get a glimpse of it, mm-hmm. of the angle of him, like, like there's a woman dancing really close to him as he's sitting on a stool. She's standing mm-hmm. really close to him, um, facing away from him, and it it's not entirely. It's up for debate whether or not she was like kind of coming against him and grinding yeah. on him, or he was like mm-hmm. placing his hands on her and stuff uh, like that. Dang. It was. It's it's a weird angle, mm-hmm. but regardless, it was a bad look. Yeah. And a lot of people were just like, oh, he should own it. But instead, he didn't. He was, like, making a bunch of excuses and saying, like, like weird shit about, like, a group of people convincing him to go out, like, sinful people, people of the devil or something like that. Like, he was saying yeah. some weird shit. And it was just like, why can't you just own it? And now he's kind of, like, lost the trust of a lot of the players mm-hmm. in the organization. And people are expecting it to, like, really blow up into, to a point that he gets fired. Yeah. Um, Wait, is this a Jacksonville coach? Yeah, Urban Meyer. Damn, what the fuck? That's insane. 
Yeah, so there's that whole thing. What a Jacksonville is a dumpster fire. Yeah. And the Jets just got their first win, so they're looking less of one. And <laughs> I think that was the true battle. It was between Jets and Jaguars who can do better. Yeah, well, with and the Jaguars. I, I just yeah. really like the Jets coach as well, so I'm happy. Mm-hmm. With the Jaguars, I forget what tweet it was, but since the tweet after the Col- they beat the Colts, they tweeted it's like one and zero, baby. We're not stopping here. And since that tweet, they've never won and like won since then. And it's been like nineteen or twenty games in a row where they just lost. You know why they say said one and zero after they beat us? Why? It's because that's our um, during the twenty eighteen season, maybe twenty nineteen. That was something we got off to like a really rough start. I think it was like one five, mm-hmm. and then we ended up like. I think we we're in playoff contention. I I wasn't really like into that season that year, but I just remember it was a terrible start. And then w- once we started winning again, it was like okay, one zero to the next game, and yeah. then we just like yeah. kept accumulating wins. And it was a huge like comeback sort of season. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and so that's kind of like the motto with Frank Reich that that he brought into the mm-hmm. organization is like one zero after every yeah. uh, win. So uh. when they beat us first game. <laughs> It was kind of teasing us about that. That's so mean, but so funny that they haven't <laughs> won since then. But I saw the, like, Tennessee Titans miss that to tie it in overtime, mm-hmm. to tie it, and they miss it. I saw that. I'm like, Titus, you cheeky bastard. You, no, you yeah, Trey's reaction to that was crazy. He's like, I can't believe it. Like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it happened. All right. Um, um, I mean, we always see that sort of shit. Like, when who did, – did the Steelers lose – to the Jets. I think it was the Rams. Rams lost to the Jets last year. Yeah, like a big team lost to the Jets. And it was like the Jets' first win. And everyone was like, what? How? You know? What also, the Was- didn't Washington beat the Steelers as well? Yeah. Or yeah. Bengals beat the Steelers? Wash- I think Bengals both, and both yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah th- those are all like. Yeah. Why, why is this happening? Bengals without Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's move on because we've been on yeah, the yeah. first two teams and it's already been like 13 and a half minutes like that's insane but kansas city chiefs first uh philadelphia eagles i'm not going to get into it because i did a recap and i didn't watch the game but just i was checking in once in a while because i was working on all day sunday but it, we i we kept it close and that's all i was kind of asking for with them because i wasn't expecting them to keep it any close but Devonte smith had his first 100 yard season or 100 yard game which is pretty impressive and that was the first 100 yard receiving player for the eagles since week five of last year so it's nice that Devonte smith is actually proving that he's a number one receiver in this league and it feels so good to actually have a number one receiver finally because it's been like such a long time since we actually had a number one receiver. Let's I let's move on to the Carolina Panthers and thanks uh Dallas Cowboys. Furiates me uh that the Cowboys beat the Panthers because it's the fucking Cowboys. And since I was working, like I said earlier on Sunday, I didn't really watch any sports or so I don't really know what happened game in and game out. Well I can tell you at least this week, yeah. But yeah. Kansas City, Philadelphia. I really think Philadelphia kept up like really well for the most part Mm -hmm. it was just like Tyreek Hill was on a rampage it was very hard to stop him individually honestly I think Jalen Hurts probably did fine it wasn't like anything great but honestly it with the Chiefs defense how they've been looking they haven't looked like superb by any means they look so awful yeah but Jalen Hurts put up like big numbers yeah but like not at a I don't know it wasn't like anything crazy it was just like you know they're playing from behind basically um for most of the game but they're keeping up which is nice to see Mm -hmm. carolina dallas that was pretty interesting i didn't get to see a lot of it but sam darnold got two rushing touchdowns is now leading the league in rushing touchdown out of anyone not just quarterbacks but running backs too but ezekiel elliott had a good game dak did pretty good schultz i think had a touchdown people were talking about yeah ezekiel elliott had a game he had 20 carries 143 yards and a touchdown so he had himself a game and the cowboys are honestly looking very very scary yeah Yeah, because they put 36 points against the Panthers, and then they put 41 points against the Eagles. I mean, uh, Eagles' defense got smoked, and it's not really saying much, but to put up 40 points against anyone and 36 points back-to-back, it's pretty impressive. But they got 20 points in the third quarter, which 
was crazy. Sam Sam Darnold is looking good, but he you can still tell he's kind of missing his best friend Christian McCaffrey because Chuba Hubbard, I don't think was utilized a lot anyways. But it wasn't like he was doing anything that would have been like you know making mm-hmm. up for the fact that Christian McCaffrey was out. Uh, but Sam Darnold definitely looks more comfortable in this game, even without Christian McCaffrey, than he was in, with the Jets. So he, he just just that alone is like really nice to see. Like, if you're going to take anything good away from the losses, like, Sam Darnold without Christian McCaffrey still looked very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you know when we're going to see Christian McCaffrey? It's a week-by-week basis at this point. He definitely wasn't going to play this past week, but week-by-week basis, um, yeah. They're, they're ready to run with Chubba Hubbard. Giants, New Orleans, don't know much about this one. Just very surprised that the Giants won this. Just considering they're zero three and New Orleans was managing to get some wins, um, I yeah I could not tell you what happened in this game at all. Yeah, uh, I, I think Kenny Galladay looked better than previously. Uh, you know, some of those quarterback wide receiver connections take time to develop over the season, so maybe we'll see more from that. Keep a lookout for that. Um, I don't really know how Jameis Winston necessarily did. I think it's probably the same thing as it has always been, where defense helps him get good ball position and he just finishes the job mm-hmm. but uh, i mean defense didn't do good enough to get the win so this minnesota cleveland game not expecting that i thought it'd be a high high scoring game considering that these two offenses are very high powered um but alternatively both defenses just did a great job and we don't really expect that from the vikings defense which is nice to see we expect it more with the cleveland defense but not to the degree that they would hold that Vikings offense at seven. So, I mean, good things to see from both defenses. It's a bit surprising that the Cleveland offense did this bad, though. Um, Yeah. Honestly, because I wouldn't say Vikings defense is anything that great. I mean, everyone's been hyping up the Cleveland Browns defense, at least. Yeah. Um, It's just odd, but, yeah, I think those are things to look out for. Kirk Cousins definitely didn't look as great, but, I mean, they were in it for the majority of the game. It was just, like, a touchdown away, so yeah. Um, very low scoring game. Wasn't expecting that. Chicago, Detroit. Um, both bad teams, but Chicago ended up on top. Detroit <laughs> now has zero four. It, it, it's just shit fest. This really goes to show that Matthew Stafford really carried most of that team to mediocrity. Like, one player can't do can't carry a team to a playoff. Like, you need the entire team to do that but it's just crazy that Matthew Stafford elevated the Detroit Lions that much and it looks like they may be the first 0-17 uh, team yeah uh, this was supposed to be a big game for Justin Fields but David Montgomery stole the show really didn't give Fields a lot of chance because he just put up so much he put up two touchdowns really early in the game and then they just like held the lead throughout yeah. the rest Justin Fields didn't have to do much he had one interception and 209 yards and no touchdowns mm-hmm. um, uh, even the backup Damian Williams got a touchdown too uh, and eight carries so definitely run game was the priority this mm-hmm. time around Buffalo Houston I mean what <laughs> this is we didn't talk about it last time we were making these predictions yeah. and this is, goes to show uh, 40-0 dude the Jesus. Bills, the like this. The Bills are so scary right now. No, like they they're great. No, they well, okay, they're not like. I really don't think they are. Okay, they're being they're bashing up on bad teams. Okay, let me just yeah beat, it, beat up someone your own size is what right. I think. Yeah, but okay, yeah. let me press this. This they're not looking so scary, but it's they're they're on the uptrend. And if they they're on rear the chest, uptrend, they were AC championship last year. What do you mean? This is exactly what we're supposed to expect from them. Yeah, uptrend meaning like they're like continually yeah. not. I feel like they're just at the same level, honestly. I don't think they would continue. I mean, considering that they were they lost that first game against Pittsburgh, I guess in that sense. But like, past games have been past three games have all been teams without their starting quarterback. The Texans technically are on the third string if you count the fact that Watson is not their starting. If Watson was their starting quarterback, you know. Okay. So, so like, I feel like this is what we expect. <laughs> yeah, but it's still like what I'm saying. It's what I'm trying to say is that. The Buffalo Bills are doing something crazy because they forty. No matter the team that they play, yeah, you just said that they're all the teams are struggling, and that is true. But to put forty points on a team 
one is crazy. To have two shutouts in the last two out of three games is a crazy feat alone. I don't care what the team is. To pitch a shutout against any team is fucking crazy because like you would expect them to get, get at least a field goal. And to beat a team 40-0, then 43-21, and then 35-0... I, it's that's still crazy i mean that's just what buffalo is to me as a team is that once you get them going it's very hard to stop them they're just very momentum based once they play a team that can match their energy from the beginning it's like well will be will buffalo be able to keep up you know as high energy knowing that they're not off to it as great as a start as the other games you know yeah like it's going to be harder to maintain this energy going into i mean next week to play kansas city like that's going to be a huge challenge yes so i basically what i'm just trying to say is like let's wait and see before we say anything like oh they're looking scary or oh they're on the uptrend like i feel like the these really didn't prove much at all to me it just proves that like they're where they claim they are supposed to be you know yeah. like everyone's been hyping them up so much so like yeah why wouldn't they shut out the houston texans with how garbage they are yeah, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, my God, they're going to the Super Bowl. Like, fucking 16-1, and one, let's go, baby. All I'm saying, I'm just trying to yeah. preface, like, it's still, no matter the team, it's still an impressive feat to score 35 points in three straight games, only allowing 21 points and having two out of three games. I'm not going, right. I'm not saying, like, oh, the Bills are going to absolutely diminish the Chiefs and do like it's going to be like a 50 point game and then it's the Chiefs like they're going to shut them out and stuff I'm not saying that I'm just saying it's like it's a cr pretty crazy thing in the NFL to like be playing up this many points with so little score like I don't remember seeing a team ever pitch two shutout games in mm, three, yeah, three yeah. Games, yeah it's just guess, yeah, it's, it's it's very well. yeah I just feel like scheduling this year has been really weird where a lot of teams have a, a huge streak of playing very bad teams and other teams have a huge streak of playing really good teams is what i've been noticing because we i mean that's what we said with broncos right it was like oh wait till they play a good team and the same with Colts, like oh wait till they play a bad team they'll get their win mm -hmm. so i just feel like it's just like a weird point in the season just like this season more so than any others where it's like all these teams are on weird sh streaks because they haven't been able to face a, a, a proportionate like level of competition, you know. Yeah, let's move on to Dolphins Colts. Did you watch this game at all? I didn't watch it. It was on TV, but I kept up with it definitely. Yeah, Colts. I, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not like they weren't still kind of having their issues, but that's injury based stuff. I I think highlights still were the fact that. Um, we were able to turn over the ball still. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as our defense gets wins the turnover battle, I think that's huge because that was like a big feat for us last year to be like being one of the top teams in turnovers and stuff like that up for the defense, like getting turnovers. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how much yardage the defense lets up, at least we are able to do that. And it's like as long as we don't lose that aspect of us, like that explosiveness... And, like, you know, that kind of X factor, I feel like that always will give us this weird edge where people are going to have to prepare themselves differently to play us. Mm. Um, so that's interesting. I won't say, like, anyone stood out. It's just it was, like, a consistent defensive battle. Definitely wasn't, like, anything amazing, though, uh, considering who we're playing against. But I will say for the offense, Jonathan Taylor had his first, like, good game. Essentially, a hundred first hundred yard game for touchdown of the season, which is like finally we've been mm. saying like fucking feed this guy, he deserves it. Mm. Uh, and I think that might be because early in the game Hines muffed a punt mm -hmm. and that turned over the ball. And so I mean, typically if anyone fumbles any ball, they get kind of sidelined for a bit. They don't get carries. That may have helped Jonathan Taylor's case, but I hope they continue giving him the ball more, regardless. Um, as good as Hines is, but, mm -hmm. like, I think Hines is better in, like, receiving like, plays, mm -hmm. like, those play option type stuff, whereas Jonathan Taylor, like, if you want someone who want to play where you're definitely going to rush, like, you should go with him. I think it was Frank Reich's best play calling of the season, but it was probably one of Wentz's worst games, actually. Really? Like, I doesn't look comfortable. 
but Mm -hmm. he shouldn't feel comfortable (laughs) i honestly like people have been advocating for him to get ir'd and stuff like that so but you know what happens happens it Uh, looked like he had a pretty decent game no like statistically it looks fine but like there's it could have been way better Mm -hmm. like if you like watch the plays where things went wrong is like those are such easy plays that he should be able to get right basically Mm -hmm. because the play calling was very much in his favor the whole game like frank reich was play calling amazingly and once was missing a lot of marks but you know the marks he did make you know allowed us to win for sure yeah to keep up with the carson wentz uh snap count he has uh 300 percent uh played snaps out of four games and he's currently at 98.2 percent played snaps and we need to get a 75 percent from him for a first round for the Eagles. And right now, if the season were to end, we would have three Eagles would have three first round picks all in the top ten. I think it's four, six, and nine. Like it's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. It's not gonna stay that way. Yeah, one I, way or the other is not yeah, gonna stay that way. It's not gonna stay right that way, but it's just crazy to think about like yeah. th- just that possibility. Like we still have a there's still so many more games to play. I just I with how badly Wentz has been getting beaten up, I can't imagine a world where they just wouldn't bench Wentz knowing that they could have a top 10 pick still. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, <laughs> if it gets, like, that bad and, like, late into the season where we're losing a lot, like, what? Like, who wins? Like, mm-hmm. Wentz is just getting more damage and you're also losing a, a pick. Like, what? who wins, you know? Yeah. But I think, I don't know, like, there's a certain, like, the more he plays and the more snaps he gets, the more, I don't I don't, I don't know how to phrase this. He's not but, getting familiar with the team because all the people he's playing against are going to get released next season because they're just our backups. Yeah. But, like... T.Y. Hilton's not playing. Mm-hmm. Quinn Nelson's not playing. Mm-hmm. Brain Smith hasn't played. Yeah. That makes sense. It's going to look scary next year, but what I'm saying, like, if the more snaps he plays, uh, the, the more that, like, number goes up and the more amount of snaps he has to miss to lower it to 75%. So even if it's, like, the last few games of the season, yeah. it's it's going to be hard to lower it. But I, I don't know, like, the... No, I'm not even saying last few, yeah. like, at the halfway point of the yeah. season. I'm saying, like, week eight, mm-hmm. if we are still at three wins yeah like if we're at three five Mm -hmm. that's an issue yeah i just want i just want the my i need the dolphins to do really bad because like that's where one of our picks are coming from and then i just need the colts to do mediocre because like still uh, if they do mediocre and we get like the 15th or 16th pick that's still really good all right um i'm wanting to reset okay okay let's move on to the Washington football team versus Atlanta. Um, yeah. This was actually really close. Not going to lie. It was. I They're, don't know really what happened in this game. Patterson went off. He had three yes, receiving Patterson touchdowns. Patterson has been looking great. That's why Mike dropped Mike Davis. Um, I, sh- I don't know why I didn't play him. He had 32 points. I have no, I don't think Cordarrelle is going to consistently have that. He'll always yeah. have those sort of games. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think it's going to be a consistent amount of fantasy points from him. You're just going to have to get lucky as far as when you start him or not. He's he's actually doing pretty good. I He's he's gotten, like, 21 points and 15 points the last three couple of weeks. But I he's doing so good that I benched Miles Sanders for him. Because Miles Sanders... This upcoming week? Yeah. Because my, Miles Sanders is doing... He's not doing good because he hasn't eclipsed 10 fantasy points since week one. And Kyle Patterson has eclipsed 10 mm-hmm. plus fantasy points in the last three weeks. So all I need Patterson to do is just eclipse 10 points. And yeah. I feel like that's a win. But um, that's all I... Big kinda, win from Heineke, though. Just because, like... You can be in a big game where it's like you're no one's really scoring a lot and it's it's easy to win if no one's really scoring a lot because it just comes down to getting that one score. But in a game where it's like back to back scoring as this one kinda was, uh sixty four points total, it's nice that Heineke was able to keep up and then secure the win. I agree. Um, I think that's a good sign for Washington. I agree. Um, so let's move on to Seattle Seahawks first. San Fran have didn't watch this game, but I really was surprised by this outcome. I did not think Seattle would have really. Won. Yeah, this was a- Russell has been looking fine. It's just like everything else doesn't seem like be mm-hmm. super tight. But um, yeah, they they had a good win. Defense really played super well. I think Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. Mm-hmm. 
and Kittle was playing a bit hurt as well. But regardless, um, I I I, ha- I have absolutely zero idea how this game <laughs> went down. Like I don't know like uh, any player. Russell stopped. still hasn't thrown any interceptions so far this season. That's crazy. Have, has he fumbled? Do you know? No, no turnovers at all. Damn, that's insane. Um, he has nine total touch or nine total passing touchdowns. Yeah, ten total touchdowns. A cl- um, damn, he's playing so fucking good. Yeah, Rams Arizona was a huge surprise. Like if Arizona was going to win, I did not think it would be by this margin, seventeen points. It was I'm, a thirty-seven <laughs> twenty victory. I, I do not know how to explain this at all. Just from how Matthew Stafford had looked the previous games, I don't know how it fell apart like this. But I mean, it's divisional game, so anything can happen, sort of thing. I imagine is the. Yeah excuse i don't know i'm kind of sad because i wanted the rams to win because i was really on that bandwagon with matthew stafford and the rams no but we both like cardinals too right? yeah yeah well, yeah we, nonetheless like it's cool it's, i just I, I like to think kyler murray is on a good track for mvp but i mean there are still some things he could tighten up but he's mm-hmm. a young player as well to be fair yeah um, but yeah, crazy, crazy thing. I just really like Matthew Stafford. That's why I wanted the Rams to win. But let's move Green Bay to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is looking very, very bad. They're off to a one and three start, and ever since they lost to Washington last year, it's just been downhill from them. From there, like it's just been so bad. Najee like, Harris still looking good, especially in late game scenarios. It seems like they just toss him the ball so <laughs> much and it's just like so crazy to see fucking green bay oh wait i totally messed up the score it's 27 okay um, gosh titus yeah aaron Rodgers looks kind of disappointed this entire game because it didn't seem like he was putting up amazing numbers i mean the defense is still pretty good from pittsburgh don't mm. get me wrong but I feel like Aaron Rodgers just expected more, just how the flow of the game was going. Like, when Pittsburgh is doing so bad on offense, like, you should be able to capitalize it once you're on the field. Yeah. But it didn't seem like he was able to too much. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Aaron Rodgers is still trying to get to a point where he's back in the MVP conversation, but he's still kind of struggling to get there after that one really bad game. Yeah. Baltimore versus Denver. This is the first real game or real team that Denver has played, and they proved that they actually – aren't as good as a 3-0 record. Teddy which Bridgewater got a concussion. Drew Locke was in majority of the game, to be fair. Still, though, I don't think they would have won, but I think it would have been closer. Yeah, it's just uh, I feel like this game brought down the uh, Broncos fan base yeah. a little bit. And so, yeah, um, I, I got not much to say. There's not really much storyline. It was kind of a blowout. So Tampa Bay first New England. This is more of a storyline just because it was the first time Tom Brady faced Bill Belichick. I love how close this game was. I was really rooting for Patriots more so than I ever have before. I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever cheered for him in the slightest beforehand, but I was I was this night because I made this upset prediction when everyone thought it would be a blowout, and at least I knew it wasn't going to be a blowout. Yeah, that's good at least. Tom Brady has officially beat every single team in the NFL. A few people can say that. Um, yeah, Peyton Manning. As far as quarterbacks yeah. go, it's Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, and Brett Favre. Yeah. And then Tom Brady. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. And a little interesting trade happened with Stephen Gilmore. I, I, is he really that bad? I thought he was like a top five cornerback. No, I think he's good. I just feel like there's some drama in the organization i mean this past off season it was rumored at least they wanted out or wanted a different contract something like that and so i guess <laughs> bill belichick was like i've had enough of this yo but like traded for a six round pick that's Dude, like a- i cannot explain that but i i think bill was really shopping for more and didn't find it it was like you know what fuck it i don't yeah. i don't want to deal with this guy anymore but that's just me reading into things i don't know shit so it's just insane that's like the eagles getting gardner Mishu for a six round pick <laughs> dude he's goaded he's the best backup in the Did league you say that's just like no i mean stefan gilmore is ob- just like still okay steph go stefan gilmore is definitely a better player than gardner Mishu, but still like i can't believe we're even having this conversation Okay, I don't feel like arguing, so let's... <laughs> <laughs> you 
Gardner Minshew is worth less than a sixth round pick. No, he's not. He's worth like at least a fifth or a fourth. He's worth an undrafted free agent. <laughs> Dude, he's you're, you're, you just don't like him because he was walking with the Jaguars. No, that's and he really beat not you. Even that. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> of course he beat us. He was bound to for all these years. Like once, sure, congrats. No, he's a goat. He's literally he's the mustache I'm man. Done. I'm done with this. Listen, okay. if you can't secure a starting job with the Jaguars, that's just that's just sad, man. No, but like they had the they drafted Trevor Lawrence. Oh, no. so Before like, how, that though, like last yeah. season he was still getting benched for other quarterbacks. That is true. But I don't <laughs> I don't understand why why was he getting benched? Because he hasn't insane. Can't, I can't tell you why. I'm just saying it's sad. It's yeah, but like his statistics are insane. Like he he has starter he has starter material stats. Okay, man. Okay, no, look, five thousand five hundred and thirty yards, thirty seven touchdowns, eleven interceptions, uh, sixty two point nine completion percentage. Not the greatest, but it's like he played safe. So it's still. I'm not saying it's a bad trait. But it's not what puts you over in this league. Yeah. Same thing with Bridgewater. <sighs> kind of. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's move on because I don't want this podcast to be too, too long. <laughs> uh, Chargers Vegas. That was a pretty good game, I will say. Chargers were up for the majority. Vegas started to get... um A little comeback yeah, going. Yeah, started to get a little comeback going. But then Chargers put it away with a final touchdown in the fourth quarter. Um, Mike Williams' first uh, bust of a game for fantasy owners. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was cool to see Justin Herbert really distribute the ball very well. Um, Keenan Allen even had a pretty bad game. So, yeah. Was that? Eckler had a good game, too. So, uh, offense in general was playing pretty well uh, against a Vegas defense that has been proven a lot to this season. Um, Derek Carr did not look as Derek Carr, I will say. <laughs> yeah, I, I was on the, this bandwagon, too, on the Raiders bandwagon, and, like, I wanted them to win because they were being pretty solid teams, and it's kind of disappointing that they lost to the Chargers, but for the Chargers aspect, they're, they move on to 3-1, and one, and this is kind of how we expected they should be the last few years. Because oh. I feel like they've always been right there because there have been such close games that they just keep getting losses at. And it's just that they're getting unlucky with yeah, it. I, I wanted to mention that I knew Chargers were w- going to win, like, for sure, as soon as the game got delayed for a thunderstorm. Why? Because oh, yeah, was hey. pulled up. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it. Yeah. I was like, it's too good to be not true. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's move on to the MVP race. Yeah, again. MVP race. Everyone's favorite segment of this show is when I list out the wait, rankings you, for... Wait, talk, talk. I'm going to go get the doorbell. Just continue. I'm pretty sure people are here. Well, they, they just ring twice. Well, yeah. I'm just going to... a pretty short span. Hmm? I, I hear people stepping. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, MVP race is when I rank the most likely contenders to win... Most valuable player in the NFL for the season, mm. um, week by week. So let's start with our honorable mentions. Teddy Bridgewater has moved down from the contention of top 10-ish because of his first loss, but also he got concussion. So it can't really blame him, but he wasn't being very efficient either. Um, not putting up amazing numbers as far as like yardage and touchdowns go, like volume at least. He was very accurate and you know safe like we were talking about earlier no interceptions no fumbles but we just need to see more out of him if he's mvp worthy because you have to be explosive to be mvp worthy all right Mm -hmm. and he has his concussion so that's not going to need to help yeah joe burrow is also an honorable mentions he's here for the first time he's 3-1 so i was like you know what i'll throw him in he's been very accurate so far except for the interceptions that he's thrown which is four of them um not an amazing amount of yards, but a pretty decent amount of touchdowns. Keeps up with the majority of the other players on this list. So, you know, if he can kind of just stop with the interceptions a little bit, I think he would be on pace to break in, out of the honorable mentions and into the top 10. But, uh, yeah, there's still things we need to see from him. Uh, I'm going to 
group Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts in together because if it wasn't for their rushing numbers, I do not think I would be able to make a case for them mm-hmm. to be in this honorable mentions section. Uh, they've remained here since last week. Uh, Lamar Jackson has a better resume going for him considering that he's a 3-1 quarterback and, you know, <laughs> MVPs are typically decided off of wins a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, he's been very inaccurate. Uh, turnovers are pretty bad. Not contributing a lot to scoring. Um, but th- that rushing is just insane. Uh, Jalen Hurts, though, on the other hand, I would say he might be top five if it wasn't for the bad record. Like, just he's been pretty accurate, which was one of the biggest caveats for him going into this season. People were saying he was not an accurate quarterback. He's been scoring decent, passing decent, um, not too many turnovers, just two interceptions, but then running a shit ton. He has the same yards per carry as Lamar Jackson now, 6.6. So I, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Hurts. There's a few things that he can improve on, but the thing is that he's improving, and that's all yeah. I want to see. Heineke, I'm, I'm just going to throw him in here anytime he wins. <laughs> anytime Heineke <laughs> wins, he's going to be in the honorable mentions. I do not think he'll ever break out of the honorable <laughs> mentions, but he's going to be here. Yeah, and anytime he loses, I'll probably take him off. As far as the top 10 goes, I'm throwing in a couple of non-winning quarterback, non-winning record quarterbacks at, tied for 10th. And that's Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson because they have been so good so far. It's just they haven't been able to get that winning record. But it's very early in the season, so I imagine they will rise from this point. They're both at 2-2. Patrick Mahomes is leading out of all of the quarterbacks with 15 touchdowns total rushing passing. You know, Both have been very accurate with 72% completion rates. Patrick Mahomes has had a higher volume of passing, though. And then uh, Russell Wilson has had no turnovers, which is like the biggest thing going for him considering Patrick Mahomes has an uncharacteristic four interceptions through four games. Justin Herbert is now at nine. He's risen. He's now at 3-1. I think he's just had some big wins, but he hasn't been like, he hasn't, there's no number that really is on here that I say stands out a lot from the rest of the crowd. So if he can do that, I think that would definitely help him get to a top five point. But as for now, he's just going to kind of sit bottom of the top 10. Derek Carr's moved down quite a bit because of this loss. Um, he's still passing more than anyone else in the league as far as yardage goes. Um, but he's not scoring a great. He has some turnovers. You know, There's just not a lot we can like give him credit for anymore now that he's not undefeated. That was like the biggest thing going for him. And a lot of primetime games. I think it's been three primetime games over a four-week span, which is just like why, first mm-hmm. of all. Like why is that scheduled that way? But, you know. Um, two of them were wins, so you have to give him that credit at least. Aaron Rodgers, number seven. I'm just kind of having him here because he's winning now and he's scoring fairly well, but there are those other inaccurate games that have just been weighing him down uh, statistically. So we just need to see him continue to just do better so that he can rise. Josh Allen is at six. He, he just has a huge role in his team. So like when you talk about value, like he is passing more attempts than anyone in the league. I think that's true. Wait, 184? It's like, I think he may be behind Tom Brady, but only Tom Brady. Um, yeah, he's he's probably like top three in it, passing attempts, but he's also rushing a lot too with mm-hmm. those rushing yards, 129. Yeah, I just feel like he's not that efficient, honestly, at this point. He just like has a huge role and he's always with the ball. So we just need to see him like really be... Um, I don't know. I guess just more consistent. I agree. I agree. Um, Tom Brady and Sam Darnold haven't really moved just because, you know, they got their... They they did what they needed to do to just stay at their positions. Uh, Tom Brady won, but Sam Darnold lost. But Tom Brady didn't look that great in his win. But at the same time, they both put up pretty good numbers in those performances. So it's just like... I don't know. They just kind of remain. Nothing mm-hmm. really that important there. Dak Prescott has moved up to number three, a huge jump from number seven. He's been very uh, accurate. He's no longer the most accurate because uh, last week he was at a 77% mm-hmm. through 77.5 through three games, which is insane. He's gone down to 75, but that's still crazy. Um, still breaking their, that record. Yeah. He's just, I don't know, scored a lot and gave a, a, gave a team their first loss, the Panthers. 
And I would say this past game, though, defensive rushing kind of aided him a lot. I don't know. I think he's definitely worthy of the top three conversation just because he's a team leader and he's looking scary. I feel like if he gets on a roll, like, it's going to be really impossible to stop him. So I just, I'm kind of preemptively putting him in the top three because I imagine he's going to kind of be settling there for a bit. Matthew Stafford is no longer number one. He's now number two. Um, His touchdown to turnover ratio is still pretty good. It was even better the week before when he only had the one interception, but now he's thrown two. It's a bit worse, but no worries. I'm sure he'll make up for it in future games. That was a bit of an off game. He's no longer undefeated, but he's still doing fairly well, I would say, Um, as far as passing yards go, touchdowns, all that. But the guy that is on top this week, for the second time so far this season, throw back to week two when he was also at number one, is the only quarterback who's 4-0. And it's Kyler Murray. Kyler Undefeated. Accurate Murray. as fuck. 76% completion rate. Not really something I expected out of Kyler Murray at all. Okay? It's really just the turnovers are weighing him down. He has four interceptions. Um, but 12 touchdowns. 1,273 passing yards. 109 rush yards. 6.1 yards per carry. Which is close to Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts level. This guy is... What you want out of an MVP. He's just explosive as fuck. So, yeah, there you go. And that wraps up that the segment of the podcast. So let's move on to week five predictions. And yet again, I did again did it through the podcast because I am bad at doing my homework. But Seattle Seahawks versus the Los Angeles Rams. I got the Rams winning in this one. Seahawks just haven't been sh- able to string it together to get more wins. Russell Wilson is looking really good like we were talking about earlier. But he just, they can't string it together to win. And... Yeah, I yeah. like to imagine that the NFC West will just be a constant battle where, like, you'll win against one of your division rivals one week, but then lose the next. So that's kind of how I see it because Rams lost and then Seahawks won. I think it's going to trade out. Rams win this one, Seahawks will lose. And then next game, you got the New York Jets against the Atlanta Falcons. I picked the New York Jets because they have a more of an impressive win than the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons aren't looking good at all. They've their that defense is looking shit. They uh, they've allowed so many thirty plus point games. The only reason why I could see Atlanta possibly winning is if they can get heat up on offense because they've been heating up on offense uh, more recently. But I just I just think. I just see the Jets just because they just beat the Titans. Yeah, I'm more confident in the Jets after that one win, for sure. I really have no other reason. Yeah, so you got next game, Minnesota Vikings for uh, first Detroit Lions. Pretty self-explanatory. Lions are... Yeah, I mean, Minnesota is 1-3. Yeah. Like, we can't say that they, as far as, like, that when Colin goes, they performed much better. It's just one more. Yeah. But... I still think that just talent-wise, they have it over Detroit. So that's yeah. what I'm going with. Uh, next game, New Orleans Saints versus the Washington football team. This was a little bit of a coin flip for me because, I don't know, I feel like Saints are still unknown because they like have yeah, a really— Yeah, I feel like all these yeah. New Orleans games are super coin flippy unless yeah. they're playing like a super dominant team. It's yeah. like I feel like they'll win some, lose some, and end up 8-7. Yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, I just I, I picked New Orleans just because I don't want Washington to win because they're in my division. That was basically the only reason why I chose. Yeah. I mean, the eight Saints. nine. By the way, I realized that eight seven would only be fifteen games. Yeah, I was going to correct you, but I, yeah, I knew what you meant. Ooh, our first. I do have Washington just because Heineke, baby. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, New England, New York, New, New England Patriots versus Houston Texans. I got Patriots because Houston Texans is just a dumpster fire. Yeah, you have to go with the Patriots. I mean, the way they performed against the Bucks was very honorable, and Houston hasn't had an honorable game all season. So, yeah. So we got Miami Dolphins versus the Buccaneers. This is pretty self-explanatory because Miami hasn't been looking great. They're one and three. Looking terrible. I got books. Um, and this is going to be good for the Eagles because if they lose, then that's better for the Eagles. Um, so next game we got Green Bay Packers versus Cincinnati Bengals. This is actually going to be. I feel like it's going to be a decent game, but I just feel like Green Bay Packers as a team is more there than the Cincinnati Bengals and that's why I have the win I could see it being a decent game I still think Green Bay will have 
have control over the entire game though yeah like that's how i see it um and then next game you got denver broncos versus pittsburgh steelers i got the denver broncos even though broncos lost and i still feel like they're not that good of a team i just one i don't want the steelers to win and two Steelers just are looking terrible. Oh, wow. I got Pittsburgh. I do. Um, I just feel like Pittsburgh... I mean, Pittsburgh has looked god-awful. But as a team, they're not the type of team that is still going to lose a shit ton. No matter how bad they are. And so I just feel like they're going to pick up a couple of wins every now and then. Mm-hmm. As you know, as indicative of that Buffalo game was. like They'll be able to get their shit together for yeah. a couple of games. So... This is just one that I imagine would be pretty simple for them, but I wouldn't be surprised if Denver wins either. I agree. So we got Carolina Panthers versus Philadelphia Eagles. I got Carolina Panthers. Hopefully this is a little... I'm trying the reverse psychology thing again. Maybe this will go, but... Damn, what the fuck? Why do you have Philly? I have Philly just because... I feel like Philly hasn't really looked terrible. I mean, I don't know. Cowboys definitely was a bad game, but... I just feel like if Chris McCaffrey isn't back, then Philadelphia will have an upper hand as far as defense goes. And then Jalen Hurts says, look, you know, I'm good. Yeah. You know, why not? I, I just feel like, why not get this upset? The other reason why I have the Carolina Panthers is just a little worrisome to see that the Eagles put up two back-to-back 40-plus point games, cool. like, let up, and that's worrying to me. I was really confident in the defense for the first two games, but now roles reverse. I feel a little bit more confident with that offense, but yeah. less confident I mean, with that defense. Philadelphia doesn't look like a 1-4 team to me, though. I yeah. feel like they... I don't know if they'll be a winning team by the end of the season, but they should be close to breaking even. Yeah, I agree. Next, we got the Tennessee Titans versus Jacksonville Jaguars. I got the Titans. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, unfortunately, I do too. But, you know, the other option is not much better. Yeah. Jacksonville is going to be 0-5. They're just a bad team. Um, Makes it easier to decide AFC South, at least. Um, Assuming Colts can get the wins they need. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Um, If titans don't win this game yeah because then that would, that would just be interesting houston beats jacksonville jacksonville beats titans Titans beats colts can the colts beat the texans and complete the cycle who knows he knows he knows um and also jacksonville jaguars have as of now with 19 straight losses is tied for a th- or not I think it's tied for the third most in NFL history. I think the record goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they lost 26 straight games. I think that was like in the mid 2000s somewhere. That's just sad. yeah, that 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 is really sad. But next game, Cleveland Browns versus the Los Angeles Chargers. I got Los Angeles Chargers because I have Cleveland. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, this was kind of a toss up for me, but I I, I like the Chargers more than I like Cleveland, so that's why I picked. Yeah, I Chargers. just feel like this will. I I feel like Chargers have gotten the publicity to look like a better team. Cleveland hasn't had a primetime game so far. Um, I just feel like no one's really been talking about them. I mean, none of their wins have been great, but you know, I feel like they're going to remain competitive in every game they've been in. I mean, you saw how they were with the Chiefs, at least. These are both teams that put up a great fight against the Chiefs. Just one managed to do it, you know, better than the other. Um, I just feel like Browns will get this one. This okay. will be the one where people will be like, oh, why do we forget about the Browns, you know? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yep. I could I could see this game going either way, to be honest. But let's move on to Las Vegas versus uh, Chicago Bears. I have Las Vegas because Bears just... Yeah, they're Justin Fields is the suck. official starter for the rest of the season, by the way. Damn, that's crazy. See, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays the rest of the year. But uh, let's move on to the next game, Arizona Cardinals versus San Francisco. I got Arizona because they're 4-0 and they're... My bad, Mike. Huh? I just touched my mic. So. Oh, you've, you're off the podcast. Oh, just leave now. Leave now. Come you're, on, man. Come on. Leave. Let me finish my prediction. Okay, man. okay. I have San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco? Oh, my God, really? Same thing as what I was talking about with Seahawks, Rams. Arizona got the win in a divisional matchup last week. 49ers got the loss. Let's just swap it over and make shit interesting, you know? And I feel like 49ers have, you know, why not? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just always just going to yeah. be like, why not with these yeah. sort of situations? Like, it's a divisional matchup. Anything can happen. So, mm-hmm. like, why not? Mm-hmm. And uh, it would be cool to see um, 
no more undefeated teams after week five. I feel like yeah, that's that really fast. Yeah, I don't know if that's happened recently in recent years where we don't have that one team that kind of gets an eight and zero point at least. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Steelers went eleven and zero last yeah. year before they got their first loss. I don't know how how far Ravens went if they were ever had an undefeated streak. It was yeah. a thirteen three season, I think. Yeah, I I can't remember. Or, or I can't the remember. Chiefs that one season. Yeah. yeah there was there was a couple. Those Eagles. Packers. Yeah. Last season also were on a streak up until a point. I mean, when the Eagles won their Super Bowl, they were thirteen and three, but they they were one and one really fast because they lost. They won and then they lost to the Chiefs. But speaking, no, not speaking of the Chiefs. Never mind. I was getting ahead of myself. Uh, we got the Cowboys versus the Giants, and this is the first time I'm picking the Cowboys solely because I really want to be. Oh, why? <laughs> why do you? Why do you have the Giants beating the fucking Cowboys? I was very surprised that Giants beat the Falcons. Not that the Falcons are great by any means, but I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll give them a chance. I never give the Giants any time of day, but maybe, possibly, hypothetically. Are they heating up? No. They're the furthest That was the sympathy it. when they needed to kind of get their confidence back and maybe have a chance to beat some good teams. Not to say that they would make the playoffs. They are not a playoff team, but maybe they can make some upsets. This is a good joke. This, this It's not a joke. I would no. never put down this prediction if it was just a joke. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not you know what? I'm not going to question your ways. Also, it's Cowboys. Yeah. These are the type of games they yeah. blow. Yeah. Look, look. <laughs> Look, I'm going to take a step back and reset the mic. <laughs> he means camera. Mics are still on. Right. Yeah. But yeah, let's finish this up. Wait, 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 we have two more. I mean, you want yeah. to keep talking about this? No, I was just going to, just quickly, so I'm going to take a step back because he predicted the Jets going to win over the Titans, and I was like, oh, all, I was all yeah. over you. Oh, so yeah. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, harp on you for picking the Giants over the Cowboys. But you yeah, never know, yeah, man. You never know. Let's move on to. We have a lot of disputes again. Yeah, what the fuck? I feel like we just keep getting more and more disputes. This is weird. All right, Buffalo first Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, why you have uh, Buffalo? Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Why did I not notice that? Okay, explain. Yeah, look, this is, this is a little bit of. I feel like this is an upset. I, I'm going to say it's an upset. Buffalo has been beating shitty teams. They lost to a shitty team. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like the Chiefs defense is sucking so much right now. I feel like the Buffalo Bills are going to be able to exploit that. And the Bills' defense is a shit ton better than the Eagles' defense. And some of these defenses that the the Chiefs played against, not saying that they're going to completely stop Patrick Mahomes because it's very hard to do that. But I feel like they're going to stall them enough to the point where the offense is going to score more points. It's going to be like kind of like the Chargers situation, how the Chargers won. The Chargers got off to a really fast start three turnovers in the first half. So I feel like if the Bills can get a couple turnovers throughout the game, then dub for the Bills. And I have Josh Allen too, so I need him to do really well. (laughs) I I just can't see a world where Chiefs are 2-3. I didn't think I could see a world where they're 1-2, but a world where they're 2-3, that's just a step further. And it's just like, no. I it has to end. They have to start getting on their winning streak eventually so that they can be one of the top seeds in the AFC. Cause I know it's gonna happen. I'm not gonna let, you know, a couple losses make me feel like, oh, now they're gonna lose to some of these teams. Like, no, they're still a dominant team that needs to get their shit together, I will admit, but they're still a dominant team. And so I just the way Josh Allen has been playing is like he just has been playing with the ball a lot. They depend on him too much kind of thing, kind of like with Russell Wilson last season. And I feel like that's going to end up biting him in the ass a little once he plays some of these super serious contenders. Because mm-hmm. not even Mahomes is necessarily like that. I don't know, like just the the way they their game plan is. It's not like they super depend on Mahomes. Yeah, because so. there's other stud or other hall of famers on that team and like hill and kelsey and stuff i i had something i mean to- even with their run game they still like manage to do well with their run game despite not having like the best running backs it's just like they have good schemes yeah i just i just feel like 
The Bills are going to overcome it. Let's move on. Indiana Colts for Indianapolis Colts versus the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to this game. I picked the Colts. I like I I like that you picked the Colts. I really did mm-hmm. think you were going to pick the Baltimore Ravens, but I appreciate this for sure. Yeah, I think I've picked against the Colts every single time this year. Yeah. And I was like, you know, we're going to this game, and I've been really mean to the Colts like recently. That's true. I- I'm I'm going to, I'm going to say that they got to win. It's going to be a very close game. Um. I mean, I'm always going to choose the Colts, but another big part of this is the fact that from the beginning I said they'd have a 2-3 start one way or another with just like a lot of people have been looking at that first five game span and being like okay how many are they winning a lot of people were super confident a lot of people were not and I was like 2-3 and right now I'm at a point where it's like if it's not 2-3 then they're worse off than I really thought that that will be the point for me where I'm like maybe I have to give up on the season for the Colts but if they do get 2-3, then I'm like, okay, remember, this is what you expected beforehand, and now they have a pretty e- pretty much like an easier slate of games afterwards. So hope is not lost, even with all the injuries. So I agree. This is yeah. a make-or-break game, and I will be there Monday night crying <laughs> regardless of what happens. Do I wear an Eagles jersey, or should I? Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, can I can I wear one of your jerseys? Cause don't yeah, you, have... you can wear an Eagles yes. jersey if you yes. want. I'll vibe with the Colts. Hell yeah. Okay, so... Let's to wrap this up. Let's just quickly uh, brush over fantasy. Um, you you did a lot of transactions. I feel. Yeah, I've been a little bit. I guess. Um, just to quickly go over it, and then if there's any things that you really want to talk about, then you can talk about it. But sure. I'm just going to go through the recent uh, transactions since that trade last year. So you you dropped Joe Burrow. Uh, you added Kirk Cousins. You added Rams defense. You well, added. You missed the big trade that. No, we talked about that. Oh, we talked about that. Yeah, we talked about that okay, last. Okay, well, yeah. That was the whole plan. Is that I, you know, I was trading away. Matthew Stafford to get Joe Burrow, but then I didn't actually want Joe Burrow. It was just like, you know, to make an even trade. And then I would just pick up Kirk Cousins and drop Joe Burrow. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. I think I think we went over the Kirk Cousins trade. I just forgot if we did or not, but I definitely remember going over that uh trade with you and Gladia, but then you added the Rams defense, you added Marlon Mack, you drop uh <laughs> wait, no. Brendan picked he Brendan dropped uh, Cardinals defense. He added the Bengals defense. Uh, you dropped Mar- Marlon Mack right when you picked him up, which I don't understand. And then you added Ch- uh, Chuba, Chuba Hubba, 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 Hubba. I've been calling him Chuba Hubbard, but it might be Chuba. Chuba, Chuba, Chuba. Chuba. Okay, and then, wow, Josh actually did something. Did he switch his password? Cause he he Josh added Tyler Boyd. Yeah, he he did do something. Um, yeah, um, and then uh, Brendan dropped the Bengals defense right when he added the Bengals defense, and then he added Daniel Jones, which is actually a very smart move. I was about I was thinking of dropping Derek Carr and picking up Daniel Jones. We're not gonna get Daniel. But yeah, <laughs> yes, I would, dude. He's doing so. He had thirty points his last game. That's crazy. Dude, I don't care how good he gets. I am never picking up. Dude, Daniel it's Jones. it's I, Daniel motherfucking Jones. He's the best quarterback in this how, league. I don't care how he did up he gets. Like that is just not a guy I. Dude, he's want gonna be my elite. team associated with. Dude, and then okay, <laughs> and then next you you added Zach Mart Moss, and then you drop. Chubba Hubba, what are you doing? You're 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 adding and dropping so many players, and then I you. Wanted, a- I wanted to pick up Chuba because if he had a good if he had a good game, I was worried that people would pick him off of waivers before me if I were like win just because of priority. Yeah. So I picked him up before he played any games. Yeah, that was because Christian McCaffrey would be out. But it was looking like Christian McCaffrey is progressing better, and Chuba didn't have an amazing game. So I was like, you know, what? I'll pick up Zach Moss, who's had. A very consistent slate of games where 10 plus fantasy points in each one. He's gotten a touchdown in each one. Um, I'm not sure if that will keep up. I'm just like keeping him on watch kind of mm-hmm. in my roster. Um, why I picked up Marlon Mack, I don't know. I thought with all the trade rumors, he'd get traded pretty quickly. But um, 
he didn't. So I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'll just wait. Yeah, and then you added Dalton Short. So after... Yeah, Logan Thomas on IR, so I had to get another tight end, and he seemed to be the more consistent option, I guess. Yeah. As far as targets go and touchdowns. So, yeah. So is there any other, out of, like, everything that we just went over that you want to go over, or did you already kind of I already... play go- Sophia, and that's scared because her team's really good. I... Yeah, I've been like leaning back. Yeah, on you're super in frame. Super in frame. Yeah, I have, the, I, I have the back. Like, it get, it's getting the back wall, so you can lean all the way Shut back. The fuck up. But, I, I finally got my win. I beat, I beat Trey. My team is actually very looking good. Apparently, I'm second. I'm second in the rankings, which is what weird. I don't. Oh, in the projections. Yeah. Yeah. Josh is third though, so I don't trust those projections anymore. Yeah, but Brendan and I, we were talking fantasy for like a good like hour. Wow. And Brendan's like I'm taking it seriously, man. Yeah, and I'm like, man, how 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 do you do it? You were nine and four last year, best in the league, and now you're best in the league again. I this week, this week I played Claudia. Should be an easy win, but I thought. Josh was going to be an easy win and I lost to him so I don't know anymore and that's what I'm scared of I'm scared that I'm going to lose but after I play Gladia then I play big man himself Brendan and I'm scared for that but hey, Caleb yeah give me Dallas Goddard I don't have Dallas Goddard oh Gladia does I clicked on your matchup and just assumed that was you alright Caleb <laughs> <laughs> what what do you want what do you want hmm I'll get. I'll give you. Um, I'll give you Devonte Adams for your kicker. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Devonte Adams for DeAndre Hopkins. Clean swap. Would you do that? I don't know. Would you? <laughs> I don't know. Would you? <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! This Sunday is the first London game. The oh, foul. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! It's a rat. Oh, Bro. Oh wait, that's cool because it's on NFL Network. Yeah, and that means more games to watch. Yes, 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 ma'am. Don't. Ever. Yes, ma'am. Don't ever. Ma'am. Don't yes, ever ma'am. Call me. Ma'am. That is so weird. You're grody. Right. But I, I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be Claudia because my team, my, I feel like I should be a lot Claudia better. Claudia zero five. No, yeah. I, Claudia's gonna beat you somehow. Yeah. Listen, she still has Matthew Stafford, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, C.D. Lamb, Tyler Lockett, Darren Waller, Antonio Gibson. All those players are super good. They just need the right week. Yeah. Vikings defense, eh? But dude, this is the most confident I felt about my roster because I feel like I should be a lot better record than I am. Because my players, it's just I get I'm so bad in fantasy, even though I have so much knowledge. But I second guess myself so much that I swap out players that yeah. I shouldn't swap out. So that's yeah. my kryptonite. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna end this here because you're, you're. I feel like you're going to uh, be be a little little frisky. A little frisky. Yeah. A little. Yeah. Know, really. Uh, really? Um, you know, even looking at her bench, it's not too bad. I mean, Allen Robinson hasn't had the greatest start of the season, but he has potential to be really good if Justin Fields can get it right. Adam Thielen is amazing, obviously. Um, T. Higgins, yeah. Dallas Goddard, yeah. Austin Hooper, I don't know. Sony Michael, I don't know. Do you feel confident that you're going to win? Against Sylvia? Yeah. I don't. No. Oh. Because George Kittle and DeAndre Swift are both questionable. Mm. And I do not trust Dalton Schultz or whoever I put in as a backup running back or backup flex. Because they've all been kind of inconsistent. I mean, Mike Williams is probably my best bet, actually. I would put him in. But Yeah. Um. All right. I'm, uh, well, we should end this here. Because uh, I don't. You should end this here. Because. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't even know. Dude, why are you being mean? All right. Thanks. <laughs> and that's how you end the podcast. This is saying toxic, and we're going to end this pod. I want a divorce from this podcast. I solely want to be filming with Lucia. I'm going to be on that next podcast. Bye. You promise. I do not promise. <laughs>
Thank you.